And if you're doing this with your highlighter, it looks like electrocardiogram when you're done, then it's not a stock that trades cleanly. Hello, one day, it's Thursday, July 11, 2024, and this is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. And hello to my brethren over there on YouTube, where we sum your cast. I can never say that word. So what are we talk about? Well, current market conditions, obviously. I have a lot to say about that. Today was a crazy day, sector rotation-wise. And I don't know if that's the beginning of something, but it should be interesting to uh, see how it unfolds. And I'm such a nerd. I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen here. Your questions on trading, just uh, we should, you could just top type them in. We don't have to wait to um, the charts or anything on that. Uh, it, it's a little easier if you do wait for your crypto and stock picks, but uh, you can put those in at any time. And we'll get to those as soon as we get to the live charts. So I want to follow up on the methodology and action and talk about the TFM 10% system with a huge trade that I took. And it, it's a really good testament for trend following and how trend following works. Not exactly the normal thing that I do, but it's a little small piece of what I do. And I'll, I'll explain that in just one second. Uh, there's a few things I wanted to talk about with the Landry 100, a little follow up there, and that'll make sense in a minute. And then I'm continuing the series on a million little things that will make you a successful trader and then obviously any questions that you have along the line just let me know there's a disclaimer screen as you know you can lose money trading or as i often sum it up it's borrowing a line from my buddy greg morris all predictions about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then there's the contact information again should you need to reach me if you want to take a screenshot of that i do answer all my own emails eventually <laughs> all right let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action i wanted to talk about some hitting the initial profit targets but we did we just didn't quite get there but i will talk about it next week and how i use discretion on one and possibly will use discretion on another and i sort of overlooked it today because i was so busy with other things so that's going to be another one of those million little things and, and that'll make sense next week we'll get to that Anyway, I developed a little system in uh, a few years back. I don't know how many. It's been probably five years now, maybe more. And my premise was, or the designer's intent was, to get you out the way should something bad happen in the market. Now, without going through a lot of details, these zones in here, this is a 5% zone and a 10% zone, and that's of the 50-5-0 week closing high. And this is a weekly chart. Now the system was originally intended for the S&P 500, but I did some quick back testing on the queues and it looked like it worked pretty good. And the reason I did that was we were on the cusp of a setup and I figured it'd be fun. And I know you want to part of me to, to just buy a hundred shares and see what happens. Well, to my surprise, that worked out really, really well. More than I ever dreamed. And I'll show you that in one second. But anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. We've spent so much time on this in the past. I'm just going to quickly give you the rules because I know whenever I show a system, I get a bunch of emails asking me about the rules. So there's the rules. Weekly close is less than 10% away or within 10%, I should say, of the 50-week closing high. So just closing in anywhere in the pink zone, okay? And two bars of upside, Landry Light, meaning the lows are greater than the moving average. The moving average is a 50-week simple moving average and that's my whipsaw filter with this system so i bought it here and i didn't have the trade handy but i've shown the trade before the actual buy of it and i'll show you the sell when that finally happens which is going to be a little painful <laughs> unfortunately uh if it happens soon but if it happens later maybe not so much but anyway 319.49 was where i got in based on this buy signal and based on where it was this morning and i thought to myself you know it's always dangerous to show somebody how well you do it because usually right after that you get whacked but anyway based on the mark to market yesterday's close because i did the slides before the open this morning i had 183 dollars and 47 cents of profit and like i said earlier just 100 shares but i, I know it's not the sneeze at but, but still just 100 shares so that's $18,000 in change profit. And to my amazement, when I did the math on that, 
that's a 57.42% return on this trade on a mark-to-market basis, not quite as good today, but that's pretty crazy. Even Ludacris would say that's ludicrous. Anyway, there's a sell in case somebody's curious. So the sell, unfortunately, be, would be way down here at 412. I was looking at the slope of the moving average, the rise and the run, and I guess the rise or whatever they call it is uh, show you how little I'm going to show you how little I know about math. But anyway, it's about two and a half points right now, and that might increase a little bit as the drop off effect kicks in. So you're dropping off lower prices and then at higher prices. And with the simple moving average, it's a little slow to cap, catch up. Now, I wanted a simple moving average with this system because I wanted a little lag to it so you wouldn't get whipsawed too much. And that's why, in case you're wondering, because you'll notice with most of my patterns, uh, specifically like bow ties, you've got two exponential moving average and the slow moving average, or the um, the 10 period, I should say, which is actually technically the fast moving average. But the 10 period is a simple moving average. And the interaction between those two, three, I really like. Between those three, I really like. But anyway, I mostly use EMAs, but in this particular case, I like a 50-week simple moving average. And so the sell signal is just a close, 10% or more away from that 50-week closing high. So that would be in this red zone or hot ping zone, whatever you want to call that. And that's 10%. You take the 50-week closing high, which would be yesterday's close, and then you take 10% from that, okay? And that gives you this zone right here. So 10% drop would be 452 based on this close and change. And then it also has to close below the moving average, which right now is a long ways away. So hopefully, I know you should never use the word hope, but hopefully that'll catch up over time. So nothing to sneeze at there. But the, the thing I wanted to show you is a couple things. It, and keep in mind with my core methodology, we're, we're more of a swing trade. We're more swing trade oriented. But through the money management, we take a piece off, like AMSC, pretty close at an IPT. I did take partial profits in it today. And um, what's the other one? ULS is pretty close. I probably should have taken profits in that. And I'll discuss that next week as probably part of my million little things, because there's so many things you have to really pay attention to. Nothing that's rocket science. Uh, it, it, we were talking right before we went live about rockets. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can't see it now. It's behind this curtain. But I have a um, a very large rocket in the back of my office, which I actually was saying earlier. I had to cut it. I had to cut the fins down so it would fit in here. It's so big. I used to be a, a rocket nerd. I'm just a nerd in general. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions on the TFM 10%, let me know. If not, let's keep moving. Uh, so last week I talked about rebooting the Landry 100 years ago. I created this momentum list and the goal was to have a hundred stocks and I treat cash as an asset class. So if the market begins to falter and I can't find new stocks, new hot stocks to put in the list, the slots get taken up by cash. So right now I have more than a hundred stocks. No, I'm sorry. I have a hundred stocks in the list and I'm actually kicking out stocks that are, slightly negative and in some cases could be uh, slightly positive in the list but i kick out the the weaker stocks first it's like managing a team of employees or your fantasy football team i'm picking the strongest and getting rid of the weakness and that is a very good thing to do if you are trading now let's follow up on that uh, brian i'll get to your question in one second let me just finish this one segment so to follow up one thing i thought about was the fact that I, I'm doing this window dressing, so to speak. And before I get into that, let me just recap real quick. In order to make the list, I'm looking at 52-week highs and out closing highs. And then I'll actually, if I can't find anything there, I'll back it down to maybe 90-day closing highs, okay? But right now, I have plenty of stocks. And my premise is if a stock goes up 100% or 1,000%, it's going to make a new high first, okay? It's kind of like the, the the premise behind the buy at B with the IPOs. We're buying at new closing highs in the IPOs with the same sort of premise, which I came up with this Landry 100 10 years before I came up with the buy at B pattern, maybe longer. Anyway, so you're buying right into these new highs. And like I said last week, 
if you tried to do this on an individual basis or even with a few stocks, you'd probably be a little hit and miss with it. I almost said probably. Uh, but if you're spreading that over 100 stocks or at least 20 or 30 stocks, then the chances of you catching some really big winners are possible. And I've already taken one out. Well, one was up three or four hundred percent in the list. And then I took it out of the list. It might have only been up 100% or more, but it was only in a few days. So some amazing things are possible. Now, one thing I was thinking about is that there is some window dressing involved, so to speak, or as a, as a matter of speaking. Now, window dressing is when you have a shop and they put something in the front window that's really catchy and snazzy. And they may or may not actually have that in stock, but it's just something to get you in the store and i was taking a look at this picture here and there's something about this picture that would that would get me into this store okay and, and i don't know if it's a shirt or these jeans are pretty cool or i, I think i'm really drawn to this pant for some reason I, and it just would if i were to see this window display i probably would go into the store to check things out anyway the definition of it is the arrangement of an attractive display in a shop window now it has other meanings in business and in stocks and the, it says here an adroit but superficial or actually misleading presentation of something designed to create a favorable impression the government's effort has amounted to a little more than window dressing now with stocks it says that is this means that the stock has been replaced close to the end of the reporting period. Now, I don't agree with this to boost performance falsely. I don't know about that because if, you, if you're trading as a technician, you will be putting hot stocks in like I am. But the point is, let's say you're a fund manager and your quarter just ended June 30th. Well, when you have to report what stocks you're long, you better have some NVIDIA in that portfolio, even if you just bought it the day before. And they call that window dressing. So again, this window dressing here, it's, I just very attracted to this window dressing. I don't know why. Anyway, so what I'm doing is constant window dressing. Now, long before I read this, and I forget which book I, I read it in, it might have been a behavioral science book or behavior finance book, but they talked about rebalancing, which is sort of what I'm doing daily, rebalancing, like uh, the more their theory was the more you rebalance, the, the better off you would be performance wise, but they didn't, I'm not sure they, they thought too much about slippage of commissions and all that. And that's something I'm not thinking about a lot either with this Landry 100. So the map isn't completely the territory is what I'm saying with this, but it's if you're up 100% on the stock and you take it and you captured that gain, then a little slippage of commissions is not really gonna kill you. But what I'm doing with this list, again, is constant window dressing. So um, I kicked out, for instance, I kicked out Cava today. I kicked out Pins. Now, both of those might make new highs and go right back in over the next week or two or whatever. But if they don't, they're going to stay out. And I added in SPXC and ULS. So, again, it's kind of a constant window dressing, so to speak, or rebalancing, however you want to look at it. Now, in New Orleans, which is about 30 miles from here as the crow flies, provided he doesn't get distracted too much. <laughs> but uh, there's a, a grocery store called Dornax, and Dornax is famous for saying, we got that. And they have this uh, rather portly fellow here as their spokesman. And if you like, you want some kind of uh, meat or some kind of cheese or whatever, he's like, we got that, we got that. So it's it's a religious experience going there. I just absolutely love the store. They really do have everything. They have like a, a fantastic selection of beers and like I said, the meats and cheeses and everything. Great place to go if you have a little barbecue or cookout or whatever to get everything you need, including lots of beer. Now, my sister-in-law who lived near the store, which she no longer does, and uh, I miss visiting them now because they were close to the store. Now I live in the middle of nowhere, which I don't want to go. <laughs> Not as much fun to go visit, but that's another story. But she said, well, they don't have everything. I said, well, give me an example. She said, well, they don't have gluten-free, hypoallergenic, organic, dust-free kitty litter. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, you got me. But they have the beer and the meat. So 
Anyway, so what's the hottest stock right now, or was the hottest stock two days ago? NVIDIA. So it's kind of like, yeah, we got that. So that's sort of the, and I know I'm nerdy about this, because that's kind of the exciting thing about it. And I, I was talking to one of you guys about a lot of these stocks, and I was naming the stocks in the list. He's like, oh, yeah, I've, oh, I've been looking at that stock or whatever. It, 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 he's kind of jazzed about the list, too. And I think it's a, a wonderful exercise for a lot of the reasons I gave last week and then for a few things I'm going to give this week, too. But anyway, so that's sort of the constant window dressing I'm doing. Now, I didn't put the video in yesterday, okay? Based on the screen capture, you can see NVIDIA has been in for 16% ride, okay? So since I put it in, it's up 16%. I was asked about these numbers. This is just telechart, and you could, when you add stocks to a list, it tracks them, and you just simply add this column in. You can't see it here, but there's a little plus over here, and then you add in track percent, just Google tracking once you uh, hit the plus key. So this column here, we can look at the live list here in a minute. I, I know you're excited about that. It's probably as excited as I am, right? And we could see how the list looks today, but you could see that, for instance, GLW, which I'll mention in just one second, was up 1%, but since I put it in, it's up 18.52. So again, it's constant window dressing, and, and that's gonna improve your performance because it's gonna keep you in the hottest stocks. Now, once they really take off, then you can give them a little wiggle room and let them run. And, and the idea here, ideally, would be to get into the, the next NVIDIA, so to speak. And I, I do hate when people say that, by the way. So if I if you catch me saying that too much, call me on it. I know I know it said AMS, see the next NVIDIA, but, or the next Amazon or whatever. But, the ultimate goal would be to get stocks in this list and have them in the list for a long, long time. And it's a bit of proof of concept, like I said last week, but it does help you to really see what's happening in the market. And I've forgotten how useful this list was. And it's it's work. It's not a tremendous amount of work, but any incremental work that I have to do is more work. But what I've seen in the last few weeks since I, since I rebooted this thing, it's only been up and running two weeks, two or three weeks, whatever. I've been pretty amazed. So again, the constant window dressing, so to speak, keeps you in the hottest stocks. And it also helps you to find hidden themes, okay? And that'll make sense in one second. And to not confuse the issue with facts. So what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at Corning. Corning is kind of a, a boring old stodgy company. And you can see the HE is fairly low, 34. It's not super low, but it obviously with this move that it made on this day that I grabbed it was pretty big. And you can see that it's up about 13% since I put it in. I probably put it in on this day here, if I had to guess. And we could, if if you guys want to take a look at any one of these and find out when I put it in, it's no big deal. It's just, like I said, I'm just, this is kind of a mechanical thing almost with a little bit of discretion on my part on, on which ones I'm picking. But you can see that it's up 13%. I don't know where it, what it did today since I put it in, but part of that was that 12% move that it made on whatever day this was. So this is a boring old stodgy company. And I just wanted to see what business they were in nowadays because it's they were making glass or something years ago. And it turns out that they're making some sort of displays or something, and it's tangential to AI. And here's the here's the crazy thing I'm seeing with AI. Stocks that are like AI stocks aren't really going through the roof, but the picks and shovels type of stocks to support AI are really taking off. And that is something cool that this is provided. Also, we were just long NNE, and I think I have the the trade from the service, the mechanical trade. I'll show you in one second. But here's another one of these little small-scale nuclear companies. Now, I don't know whether this is a viable producer of power or just some kind of, you know, another one of those energies of the futures that we keep hearing about that always remains the energy of the future. But so what? Through technical analysis, if these things are moving, then we're going to go after them, right? 
especially once they set up, of course. But this kind of keeps you in the flow. And it's just been a wonderful thing to do. If it's something you want to do on your own, I think it'd be a wonderful exercise. I could, I'll be happy to let you know exactly how I'm doing it as much as I can. Go ahead and watch last week's presentation. Now, again, it's going to help you unearth these themes and see where the money's going and sector action. And these crypto miners are just popping up in here like crazy, like popcorn. And my question is, why are these crypto stocks doing so well, given the bear market, the bear market in crypto, as you'll see in just a minute? So that's got me scratching my head a little bit. But what is, is, and don't confuse the issue with facts. So I might be looking to go after some of these crypto stocks. Now, they're a little wild and crazy. I'll give you that. And they're a little hard to get in and do the, the trend following more on stuff. But I think I think some of these could be plausible. Now I just kind of randomly picked a, a few of these. And what's kind of cool, and again, I know I'm kind of going off on a nerd thing, geeking out on this, but what's kind of cool is it's it's popping up with a lot of adjacent stocks, so to speak, like semiconductor adjacent stocks like not an actual semiconductor. Like years ago, there was a semiconductor, it was considered kind of a semiconductor stock, but it was actually really a chemical company that made chemicals for the semiconductor industry. Well, I never heard of metrology equipment until a few days ago when I put this slide together, or yesterday, but anyway, and that's some sort of precise measurement that they use for semiconductors. I don't know how that works, but I find it kind of interesting that here's a tangential company or adjacent, how you want to look at it, to semiconductors. And the same kind of thing is happening, obviously, with the AI stocks. And this list is beginning to unearth it. And here is an AI driven health intelligence platform. Anybody remember the dot com days? Oh, God, wish we can go back to then for a little, uh, a little while, right? Well, anything with a dot com on it went straight up back in the day. And so this is an AI driven health intelligence platform. They have the buzzword AI in there, but it might be worth a shot if it sets up, of course. And here's another AI stock. Now that might be more of a pure play. I don't know. I'd CRDO. Now here's one that I found kind of interesting. A politician who does not lose at trading just bought that particular stock. So that would be uh, a friend of mine was just getting into Twitter and he was asking me what to follow. And I gave him a few people to follow, like Dave Keller, people like that. And there's somebody that that posts all these politician trades on there. And I forget who it is, but it'd probably be a good idea to follow them because this politician, and I'm not getting political here, believe me. <laughs> but this particular politician is a really good trader, okay? I, I'm just saying, I don't know how. He or she does it, she, but uh, he or she, she is really good at this trading, like really, really good, just saying. But that's the beauty of technical analysis. If somebody knows more than you about these stocks and their performance and what they're going to do next, which they do, okay, then it's going to show up in the charts. I'm geeking out tonight. Now, here's like another random thought that I thought as I'm going live. It's like, and then today really woke me up to it. It's like these REITs are popping up everywhere. It's like, REITs? Are you kidding me? It's like, ugh, the boring old REIT. Okay. Hey, no names, no names, Brian. But yeah, she's a really good, I mean, he or she is a really good trader. Or maybe they, they are They are a really good trader. Let's, let's leave it there. Uh, <laughs> oh, somebody jokes a little time. But anyway, REITs, okay, real estate investment trust. Maybe all this vacant real estate is going to be needed to house all these AI computers. I don't know. And it's not my job to figure out why the pieces fit. I'm just a trend following moron. And my life got so much better after I got through my initial depression and anger and those five stages or whatever it is of you know acceptance and, you know, <laughs> all that other stuff after being called a trend following moron 
I'm like, you know what? Maybe I am a trend following moron because because when I confuse the issue with facts, I don't do that well. Or if I try to pick a top or whatever, I don't do that well or bottom. But if I just follow along like a good little trend following moron, I do okay over time. Okay, uh, Brian says, yeah, we're not going to say names in here, but yep, you uh, you you nailed it. You know who it is. <laughs> Uh, today's CPI numbers were a little better than expected. What's a, what's a CPI number? Hitting that if might nudge the Fed to cut rates sooner. So how does one make sense of the market action day, especially QQQ? Okay, um, and I'll get to this in one minute, but what I saw today was the, the mags got hit. The mags actually made a TKO, Magnificent 7. And they don't look that bad. We're going to take a look at them in just one second, or maybe 20 minutes. But the mags don't look too bad. In fact, today's move is actually kind of a nice little knockout move. You got these stocks just going straight up. And then what happens is the Johnny come lately is compiling in, and that makes them go up even more. And then you have like a knockout move. I kind of expect the overall market to do that. And I talked about that in last night's service. And I'll put some services, I'll update the services first chance I get under DaveLearner.com slash archives, and you go in and see what I talked about, about this. But, but I did cover a lot of this in, in recent services. So I'm not too worried about the the NASDAQ or the Qs at this juncture, uh, other than my hundred, my little 100 shares that I have. <laughs> but I, I think that it's just these these big hot stocks got hit and then the sector rotation was just ridiculous today. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. I don't know if that's a long-term thing, though, or a one-day wonder, short covering, or I don't know what. We'll, we'll, we'll pick it apart a little bit. Now, when people get into trading, they think it's going to be one big epiphany. And you will have some minor epiphanies along the way. But one thing that I've really been noodling with a lot lately is that it's a million little things that will make you successful. And just and this has been really making me cognizant of what I'm doing. And, and I ran out of time tonight. It'll go in next week's uh, webinar, but just a little spoiler alert. I, I try not to do too much day trading, but I get sucked into a little bit here and there. But one thing I do is I watch 30 minute charts and there's a reason for that. I'll, we can get into that next week. But I watch 30-minute charts, and the basic reason is not to get caught up in the zigs and zags. And I discovered that by accident. And I'll retell the story next week. But long story endless, with the five-minute chart, it's like everything just, you know, this bar that looks like that is really like that big on a 30-minute bar. And you can end up chasing your own tail. And that was like another one that that came up. And the more, the point I'm trying to get you, believe it or not, I have one, is the more cognizant I am lately of my trading, my mistakes, my trials and tribulations, what I forget to do and everything, it's just really driving the point home with me. And, and a lot of what I do here is for me from a selfish standpoint, okay? So if I'm talking about a million little things that maybe I need to be doing some of these little things, okay? And that's a great thing about the educational business and, and the consulting business and the analysis business, it, it I'm, I'm forced to do all this work and it's it it's i don't mind doing it. i enjoy doing it but it's from self from a selfish standpoint it, it makes me a better trader it makes me better at a lot of this stuff and and hopefully you guys are benefit benefiting too in the process and that's the ultimate goal and a lot of things that i tell you starts with the premise of man i wish i knew this 30 years ago it's like as i was getting ready to do this i was thinking I've been saying 30 years lately, and it's like it's probably more like 35, which is which is scary. Anyway, number 348, 148 is don't create themes, let things find you through TA. Years ago, I had a buddy, and um, a lot of two drink minimum stories with that. So if we ever get together, have a couple beers at the bar, I'll tell you some stories. Uh, usually, when I speak in person, I talk about him a little bit he uh his claim to fame was he ran an account up uh, uh, like a five thousand dollar account or something to a million and I, I saw the receipts so i know he did it uh but then he subsequently blew up and ended up on my front 
doorstep homeless and he's no longer with us he uh he liked to drink a lot <laughs> and that was his ultimate demise again you know two drink minimum i guess we shouldn't be celebrating the death of an alcoholic with alcohol but what else would you celebrate it with i don't know but don't don't create the themes let themes find you but anyway long story endless back in the day and i was just kind of getting the technical analysis back then and uh late 80s early 90s maybe and he had a broker cold called him and there were some big floods in the midwest or wherever mississippi river valley and uh his point was that all these farmers just planted all their crops and then the all these floods came through and washed away all their crops and with those crops washed away all the fertilizer well that makes a lot of sense okay the, you know down came the rain down comes the rain and washes the fertilizer out so this guy was was bullish on these fertilizer companies i guess like potash or something well i watched those companies and it never did anything but the theme was was pretty cool okay I, I, another theme that found me by accident was when and i've said this a hundred times maybe a thousand but academy sports set up as an ipo as the first pullback i'm like this looks like a fantastic setup i feel like i have to take it it's a must take trade as opposed to a mistake trade and i'm like oh geez it's a it's a brick and mortar retailer and COVID just hit and who's gonna go shopping at a brick and mortar retailer well i didn't think about that and you don't have to think about these things that's a point okay i didn't think about that people might want kayaks and fishing poles and just something to get out of the house because they're stuck to be stick sick of being cooped up and that turned out to be one of our biggest winners and we wrote it for about a year or so if memory serves but anyway so that was a theme and i don't think and you know let me know if you if you came up with that theme on your own and ran on bought academy because i i, I doubt that you did and maybe you did but the from what i've seen 99 out of 100 themes do not work and maybe you'll get lucky and hit on that one theme now i'm talking both sides of my mouth but the 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 person who did make that million bucks he did notice there was a shortage in his industry of memory chips so i don't know if that's a theme or whatever and it just so happened there was only one manufacturer at the time it was micron and he would just buy a shit ton of micron options i remember his see here we go two drink better one but i remember his first trade at phone call he said if i want a stock to go up do i buy call or put and so i was like call okay so hung up the phone and two minutes later the phone rings i got the broker on the phone and he wants to know if he's buying to open or buying to close i'm like he's buying to open jimmy just you know whatever leave me alone <laughs> and it turns out he did really well with that but his equity swings were brutal hundreds 100k a day and things like that and he just had a lot of fun with it until he blew up anyway in the geez i'm going to the two drink minimum part but on top of all that he didn't bother paying taxes on it and then blew up and somehow he still owed that light tax money, but that's another story altogether. Good luck uh, getting that IRS. <laughs> anyway, like I said earlier, here's like a, a boring old stodgy company. I mean, Corning, that's kind of boring, right? Is an AI play. And now a small scale nuclear company is an AI play. So these themes are finding us through the technical analysis. Don't bet the forum on these themes, but if you see a setup, it AI or something that's unearthed through all this, then by all means go for it if it's an F yeah setup, of course. Now, this is one that I thought of last minute. Number 992,521, stay with your forte. So I have a client that's a really good scalper, not all the time, but but when he's hot, he's just amazing. And I'm a trend follower. So if I'm trying to do like an intraday trade i want to get in as close to the open as i can and i want to hold that all day long but he's in and out in and out in and out and i just can't i can't let go of a stock while it's moving nicely in my favor and then i end up with a loss but he's in and out a dozen times and and 
I'm not built that way. I can't do that. I don't want to become that. I, as I, I did try a little bit just to see if it could be done. But when the market's really trending, I need to be trading. And when it's not, I need to be sitting on my hands. And that's, you know, I need to write that down. That's a, that's a 995,231. <laughs> you know, sit on your hands when the market is not trending. Let the market come to you. Trade your methodology, right? So I just grabbed the service and AMSC. I did take partial profits of this one today in the model account. I usually try to let the model account at least hit the IPT, but it was just getting fairly close over a short period of time. Semiconductors were getting whacked, just had this frothy feel to everything. And so I said, you know, I think it's okay to take partial profits. And we're looking for a thousand dollar profit on the first low. So if I got eight or nine hundred, somewhere in that range, that's cool. And it's the second loaf where the real money is. Now, none of the stocks in this portfolio have hit the IPT, although ULS did come fairly close today. I'll probably look to take profits in that one. If we stay a little bit at or where we are now, I think it might be worth going after as far as taking partial profits. So that's the open portfolio. And we've had a pretty good run as of late. So I grabbed some trades going back a couple of months or a month or so, whatever. Now, this one was opened up in March. We actually take a look at it, this one in just one second. Oh, by the way, here's that NNE. Unfortunately, it did stop us out, 127. I think we were up over 300% at one point. And uh, that's another story altogether about taking a little extra par partial profits on that. But I was trying, and trying to be the key word, to hang on for a huge run. Uh, I'd much rather have a stock like K&F that we rolled for months and months and months and did really well. And I, I obviously, had It'd be great if it was continues on and rode for years, okay? As opposed to a, a kind of a bottle rocket flash in the pan like like the NNE. But anyway, long story on this point I'm trying to make is you can see based on these numbers, knock on wood, come in. Uh need a new joke. We've done fairly well as of late. And this is uh I cut it off the top so it would fit, but this is a the hypothetical 100 k account. There's always a hundred K in the account for my hypothetical basis, keep the math easy. Uh, and I'll give you the spreadsheet if you want it to uh, track your own trades, that is. And so it'll, if you put your account size in, which is up here, which can't, where you can't see it, it'll calculate the number of shares based on 2% risk per trade. So on a 100K account, you're risking 2%, $2,000 if stopped out. You're taking profits when you're up 2% half, on on the trade itself okay now that you might be up 13 percent or half might be in this case was off uh let's see 18 percent on this particular trade so it's going to vary based on the volatility of the stock but anyway so stick with your forte so so this is a reminder to me hey dave this is where the real money is this is what you've been doing for 30 years i think maybe longer <laughs> This is what you need to focus on, okay? So stay with your forte, and it's hard. And, and I think one of them is be beware of trade goads. I don't know if I have that in here. If I don't, it should be, because it's really easy to get sucked in to trade goads, especially when you're seeing somebody that's actually trading, actually making money. Here's, the, here's one that's been a big one for me lately. And it, it's kind of hard to prove a negative. It's kind of like, um, it's hard to prove that Bigfoot doesn't exist, it's, it, but it's hard to prove that. It's kind of along those lines. You, you look at a stock, and then you see a stock take off, and you just want to kill yourself. Not kill yourself, but slap your head, slap yourself in the head because <laughs> you didn't take it. But what, what you're failing to realize is, and this is a this this goes into a deeper neurology that we could we could certainly unpack at some point in time. But there's a lot to it. And it's just the way your brain works from a neurological standpoint, a little psychology in there too. But you're going to pick out that one time or multiple times, but where the stock takes off without you, but you're not going to catalog how many times taking similar action, which you should not have taken. You know, if it's a great setup, then by all means, take it. Okay. And then, yeah, beat yourself up if you don't take a great setup. But if you're doing S and G trading, okay, and if you're day trading, you should be swing trading and position trading. It's something out of your forte, right? If you if you're seeing these moves take off without you, well, 
what you could do is make darn sure you develop a methodology for that. But the problem with that is if you've worked on your trend following moron stuff for 20, 30 years, or at least 10 or five, it's going to take a little while to, to kind of shift gears and do something new. But what you need to do is, is track when you don't act. And I've got this little digital notebook here. And I started writing down, it's on the charger, so I don't know if I can grab it or reach, but I started writing down things when I when I don't act, things that I'm things that I'm tempted to do. And and maybe number 672, 171 will be track your temptations. So track when you don't act. Now, number 98379 is take the if the trade failed miserably test. Okay. So make sure you can honestly say to yourself, if this trade fails miserably, I could totally live with myself. And the grammar said it should be, I could totally live with me. That sounds kind of odd. Let me know, you guys know a little English, if that's uh, correct. Now it's okay to drop an F-bomb, but just make sure when you go into a trade, it's kind of like this s and trading where I'm tracking my things that don't work it's like it's important because on those trades it's not like they look fantastic it's it's just like i'm i'm dealing with fomo okay because i'm seeing a market take off without me but ask yourself if it failed miserably could you live with yourself and that's a trade where if you take the trade and it fails and of course, you're allowed to drop an F-bomb or two, right? But then you just shrug your shoulders and say, next, if I saw that same trade tomorrow, I would take it again. Now, some of you might be thinking, that sounds a lot like number 73,110, which was refer to your setup gauge on every trade and only take the F, yeah, trades. Well, that's like the negative counterpart of that, okay? An F, yeah, trade is an F, yeah, trade, okay? And if you're getting stopped out on FEA trades over and over again, each each particular FEA trade might have a random outcome, okay? Shit happens, we all know that. All predictions about the future, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. But if you're unsure of the trade, if it's not a 100% FEA trade, okay, then ask yourself, could you live with the outcome, okay? Now, the TARS trade was was one of those trades. Now, I'm reluctant to say that if this trade doesn't work, I would be shocked because somebody's gonna pile into that stock and, and say, well, Dave Landry said it would work. Well, I don't know. The, the, the returns on each individual trade can be a little random and that's something to, to wrap your head around. But over time, you're going to catch these big winners, like for instance, like the K and F in here. Okay, it's a nice little run. And uh, when did we get in, in that one? Uh, July of 2023, and this snapshot was taken on the 11th. By the way, you can go to DaveLeonard.com/archives, and you look at you can look at the videos for each one of these days. Great, free, completely free exercise in learning my thought process, how I process things when it comes to the market, how to do the money management, a little bit of the psychology mixed in, what I'm looking at, what the sectors are doing, and so on and so forth. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. And again, I'll I'll look at where we are and I'll try to get them as up to date as possible without putting the, the real time data in there. If you want to look at the real time stuff, I'll make you a deal on that too. But anyway, DaveLeonard.com slash archives. But I remember thinking with this TARS, because I watched the stock go up day after day after day after day after day. It kept showing up on my scans. And I'm like, when this thing sets up, I am taking this trade. I don't know why I'm talking like Grover. <laughs> my wife, my, out of the blue, my wife's like, you remember Grover? I'm like, yeah. And we started watching Grover videos the other night and uh, good stuff. But anyway. But I remember thinking, watching the stock just go higher and higher and higher. I was just absolutely amazed with this stock, and it was coming up in my momentum list. And this would certainly be one that, if you know, way back in the day when it was banging out these new highs, would probably make it to the Landry 100. And then when it set up, we had, of course, the big blue arrow. We had persistency. Persistency 
is a stock's ability or any other market, excuse me, to go up day after day after day after day after day. I think that that's probably one of the biggest, most important things you could, did I say important <laughs> buttons? These people, why do they say important and button? I don't know. But it's one of the most important things you could do is, is look for persistency in the chart. Boy, Chief Orman is really wound up tonight. But look for persistency in the chart. I swear I'm not on anything, not even caffeine. <laughs> I, I do not have any performance enhancing drugs before my webinars. But you can see it goes up day after day after day after day after day. That's persistency. Mathematically, if you want to play around with it, I've done it before. I call it uh, my pickup sticks charts. And we can take a look at those and uh, I'll show you what that is. It's just something to play with. It, it's not, I'm not sure what value it is other than helping you see trends. But I'll show you that in one second. But mathematically, it's equivalent to linear regression. I just like to look at the chart and draw a line through as many bars as possible and see how many I can in intersect. So that's got serious persistency. That just means that the demand is persistent for this particular stock. Now, it also accelerated higher. So if you rewind the tape, you'll see that I had it listed as a trend, um, no, as, a, as an accelerating momentum strategy type of stock. I almost said trend pivot pullback. I was looking at this little pivot point here. But accelerating momentum strategy, you're looking for a trend and then you look for that trend to accelerate higher and then you look for the pullback. So there's your acceleration. And then you had a nice deep pullback and it had a bit of a TKO within that pullback. We'll take a look at the mags in one second because that had a TKO today, which was kind of cool. I know I'm geeking out tonight. Now, as a general statement, it trades cleanly, okay? It tends to go up day after day after day, persistency, right? That's cleanly. It doesn't bounce around a whole lot like electrocardiogram. Yeah, the volatility increased when it shot higher, but then it corrected nicely, that nice deep pullback. But you can see it just trades nice and clean, okay, for the most part. And, you know, that might be a nice little tool to use. I was thinking about this as I was drawing this on here, how cool it looks. And I'm just geeking out tonight. But you could see that if you took some sort of like highlighter, you know, maybe maybe that could be a tool. And, and print off the chart and get a highlighter and say, okay, I'm going to take this trade. And, and if you're doing this with your highlighter, it looks like electrocardiogram when you're done. Then it's not a stock that trades cleanly. So here's our TARS, and it, it scratched out on the on the remainder, which actually, I was actually surprised. I really was. I, I, I just felt like I knew the stock was going to go. I didn't bet the forum on it. I bet no more than 2%, like I would on any other trade, even though I knew, so to speak, you never know for sure, but I knew it was going to work. And I was actually shocked initially when it wasn't working. And that's why we use stops, and that's why I didn't bet the forum and go crazy. Now, maybe next time, I don't know if they had options, but maybe next time I'll step on the gas a tiny bit and, and maybe throw an option straight on for s and Gs, but you gotta be careful with that stuff. But anyway, I just knew it was gonna work. And it did. Now that doesn't always happen. So, you know, hey Dave, why don't you tell me when it's gonna when you feel that way? And it's like, no. And I've had clients in the past, like, I want you to call me, you know, I'll pay you extra if you call me when you really think one's gonna work. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Because any trade can be random, although there will be times where you really feel like it's it's going to work, okay? All right, let's shift gears, talk about crypto. If you guys want to talk about any crypto pairs, let me know. If you want to start talk about stocks, feel free to start punching them in now. And by the way, just one more thought about that. Stay with your forte. I have a button that just reminded me of. I have a little stream deck, which you push the button to open up different windows and stuff. The gamers use them a lot. I, I find it really convenient to use with my business because I have like uh, stock charts in there. And then I have telechart, not telechart, um, what do you call it, trading view in there and a few other applications and stuff. And that's pretty cool. It, it allows me to, to do these things on the fly. Anyway, I have one called KOAM, the king of all markets. And that's kind of like my ultimate goal is to be the king of all markets, the king of everything. What, but that's kind of 
sometimes that thinking gets me a little sidetracked and I really need to stay with my forte. So again, a lot of what I'm giving you here is also for my benefit. And it's also, I think back to that young punk version of myself and a lot of what I do goes back to that. So if you take a look at Bitcoin and let's get this window out of here. So we, let's see if that still works. Let's change the window. Bitcoin is a bit of a bummer. And in general, crypto has been a bit of a bummer. Let's talk about Bitcoin first. In fact, let's do this. Let me hit my little special button here. And let's take a look at, at Bitcoin and Landry Light. And this is something I've been tweeting quite a bit about. I'm T following Moron on X. My wife was asking me, do they still call them tweets? Not as X? I, I guess they do. What's Bitcoin in this? Okay, so I'm kind of a longer term, maybe closet bull when it comes to it's just I just I guess I just came out of the closet on that. When it comes to Bitcoin, I I, I just I think it's gonna work, okay? And I guess so far it has worked and and I remember thinking I was crazy when I bought it at 4,000 and then I thought I was stupid crazy when I bought it at 18,000. I'm like, I can't believe I'm buying some zeros and ones. But you know, you listen to a little Michael Saylor and before you know it, <laughs> you're confusing the issue with facts. But anyway, longer term, I'm a bull, so don't be a hater on me, okay, in case you're a bull on Bitcoin. But over the short term, I can't help but notice we've had 28 days of downside Landry light. That's the highs, less than the moving average. If you have the ACP platform, all you have to do if you're watching this on YouTube is like the video and then click on this little plugin and you get my plugin for absolutely free. I'm going to charge it for this one day. I swear I will, but it's been free for the last couple of years, how long they've it, it's been out. But anyway, if you pay attention to Landry Light, if it's green and red and green and red or none, like we saw back here, and of course, draw your sideways arrows, then the market is just chopping sideways. If it's nice and green, like you see back here, maybe it's trending, okay? And if it's nice and red like this, maybe the market is rolling over or trending lower. But for now, it's trending lower. I'm surprised nobody hated on me for pointing this out, but uh, I've been putting out a tweet almost every day on the number of days of downside Landry Light. So that's kind of that's kind of ugly there. As goes Bitcoin, so goes the shit coins for the most part, SHYT. Ethereum, not so hot either. You can see lots of Landry Light there. Now, Ethereum woke up for a little while, and that might have been some of the ETF pop in that. One of, one of my concerns, I don't want to get too far sidetracked, but one of my concerns with Bitcoin, it's been my concern forever, is it's kind of like gold. And as I've said before, I don't know if it's one Olympic size pool or or what or how big of the block, but but I know in theory, depending on your size of yard, all the gold in the world could fit in your backyard, okay? So there's a finite amount of gold on earth, at least so far, that we've uncovered. And Bitcoin has a finite amount of 21 million. Well, getting back to gold for a second, there's only so much gold in the world. But if you add up all the futures contracts and the options and all that other stuff and ETFs and everything, it's going to be like 100 times more gold than really is. I don't know that for a fact, but if somebody knows some math on that, please let me know. And what concerns me is the paper Bitcoin, okay? How much Bitcoin, and I know a lot of the exchanges have been disingenuous and, and that's getting better due to regulations. I never thought I want regulations, but that's getting better. But my question is like these exchanges, sometimes like I like to buy some Bitcoin. Okay, yeah, we got just some Bitcoin. We got it right here. And they don't actually buy the Bitcoin, okay? they Oh yeah, we got some, we got some here for you. Don't worry about it. OK, not my keys, not not your keys, not your coins or whatever. Another story altogether. But I wonder how much paper Bitcoin is really out there. So that's one thing that does scare me with Bitcoin that goes a bit against the arguments. I'd like to ask Mr. Saylor, what about all the derivatives? What about all the uh, paper Bitcoin out there? Now, if you look at the well, there's one taken off. I wonder what that is. Bit. USD. 
Now, the point I was going to make is most of these chick coins have been in a serious bear market. And if you just look at the 30 EMA, your 30 EMA is your best friend in crypto and pretty much any other market. And the more I mess around with, the more I like it. But notice all these markets that are in the negative, at least, are trading well below that 30 EMA. And as I preach week in and week out, if all you did was avoid these crypto pairs trading below the 30 EMA, you stay out of a lot of trouble. This one halved, okay? Watch that Landry light, okay? And, and this one never got above the 30 EMA, or there's certainly no upside Landry light. And it was, uh, let's see, 110, and now it's 30 cents. So it's lost 70% of its value, round numbers, and never got above the 30 EMA the whole time. So just avoid, I mean, it goes on and on. You could just go through all of these. 10, now we're down around, what, handle of five, that's almost 50%. 40% at six. Here's another one, okay? And this is uh, kind of like the IPO things. Never buy an IPO unless it closes at a new high, at least. And if the high is set on day one, don't buy it unless it closes above that high. Well, in this particular case, this thing came public, at least on this exchange, and all it's done is implode ever since. And once a 30-day kicked in, 30 EMA, it's never gotten above that 30 EMA. So we had a 30 like right, right there, 90 cents and then 30 cents or whatever. So you kind of get the idea. Now, to my surprise, and this is like a million little things, that looks like a short. Uh, there are a few in here that are taking off. I don't think I'd rush out and just buy that one. That looks a little dangerous at this juncture. But, you know, you got to check back off when it comes to markets. And I've been a little lazy in my crypto analysis lately. I've been paying attention to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's been so crappy. And most of these other shit coins have lived up to their name as of late. In fact, I was wondering this morning as I, as I was having coffee, if these, these shit coins are ever going to take off again. And maybe they'll start taking off. When, whenever you start feeling that way, everything's abysmal. It's time to turn around. Okay, crypto, DAF and OPA, D-A-F, USD. What is DAF? DAF? I don't know if I have that in my database. DAF? DAF is, is that DAFI? Nope. Yeah, I don't know which one that is. Uh, do you have another symbol for me, Frenchie? And OPA, that one sounds familiar. USD, let's just take a look at USDT. Now, I don't like this OPA at all. This thing is... Uh, it goes against everything I, I preach about on that one. So if you have another symbol for DAF, let me know. I'll be happy to take a look at that. Okay, Brian says, and let's go ahead and shift gears back to stocks, unless there's we could always come back. Okay, good question. And now I, I just realized why you're you're asking that. So Brian says, do you think it's better to trade single stocks or ETF like QQQ? Single stocks all the way, 100%. Now, this stock, this ETF, just made an inefficient move. It's a fairly efficient market that made an inefficient move. Your real money is going to be in those inefficient moves. And this is, this is kind of a, an anomaly that it worked out this way. But take a look at like NNE. So we got an NNE down here, right? And this thing just blasted higher. And then we stopped out, obviously, because it was just, it got so crazy. You're not going to get in the queues and have them go up three or percent. Was it 250% this one day? I forget. One of you guys was talking about it earlier. Um, I forget how much it was. But anyway, you're, you, you want to seek out inefficiency. Now, if you are following something like TFM 10% system, which initially, again, I use mostly to get me out of the market as opposed to getting me in. I have other ways of getting into markets, bow ties and pullbacks and all this other good stuff that we talk about every night. But you're not going to capture huge inefficient moves with ETFs. In fact, I started working on a book years ago, which I'm going to actually combine into another book, and it's going to be about that thick and about that big. 
and hopefully I'll never write another book again. <laughs> It'll take me years to finish all this, so I'll probably be dead by the time I'm done, but maybe somebody will, uh, maybe I'll leave it and my heirs will publish it or something. But anyway, I hope to get it done at some point, all kidding aside. But the original, or the which is going to be a volume of this, was was the lost art of stock selection. And I don't know if I could use names or not, but I'll, I'll use names, I guess. Uh, Greg Morris wrote a book a while back, Investing with the Trend, and his publisher contacted me. Uh, he His publisher contacted him and said, hey, you know anybody else could write a book on finance? And uh, he goes, talk to Dave Landry, which was, I was flattered that he would say that. Um, you know, it's kind of a pinch me moment when Greg Morris recommends you like that. And basically, I sent him an excerpt where I said that the stock picker is a dying breed, but it's going to be a, a less crowded playing field because all the, the the flocking towards the the ETFs and whatever the shiny object is. I guess right now the shiny object is uh, zero DTEs, which I'm a little drawn to, truth be told. But I think that in this less crowded playing field, it's going to be we're going to, we're going to have tremendous opportunities, something like this NNE that the whole world doesn't see, but we're seeing it. And John Ross, I don't know if he's here tonight, but John Ross in our Facebook group, our IPO guy, he's seeing it. And the rest of us at Facebook are seeing it sometimes thanks to, to John. So we could seek out that inefficiency. But anyway, the publisher got back to me and it's like, uh, he's like, I like what you're saying here. And he says, I tried hard to push it, but I was, rejected they agree with your premise the stock pickers are dying breed so it's like basically we're saying you're trying to write a book for people that are a dying breed and that just doesn't work in a publishing world so so be it anyway uh so to answer your question <laughs> so to answer your question yeah i prefer individual stocks it just so happens that the cues took off with the system and i was just trying to kind of make a point with the the TFM 10% system. Okay, you guys want to talk about any individual stocks, let me know now. I'm going to breeze through market timing pretty quick, or, or the markets, I should say, not market timing. And then we'll hop into your questions. Okay, S&P 500 got whacked a little bit. Like I told my peeps tonight, though, this, this market could use a correction. Now, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I like to be a man on the street kind of guy. And a few people in the gym figured out that I do a little trading. And I think what happened was my, if memory serves, there was a, a young guy that was working with prop firms, attempting to at least, and he was trading E-minis, which, as I said before, people, it's so funny, people get into trading, they trade the two hardest markets in the world to trade, E-minis and Forex. Those are two highly efficient markets, speaking of efficiency. Very difficult, very difficult to trade. Not, I, I'll trade them, okay? Especially like the E-minis here and there, but whenever I lose, I'm beating myself in the head. You know, I beat my head against the wall because it feels so good when I stop. But anyway, man on the street, back to that. Um, what I'm noticing in the gym is that some people, and I've seen this theme play out before, some people get out of the markets. Like I had one friend when the administration changed in, I want to say 2016, he wanted to get out of the market. And I encouraged him to stay in the market, even though he might not like what's happening politically, okay? Because that might not have anything to do with anything. Yeah, your own personal beliefs, you're not liking it, right? And it makes you mad, but if the stock market doesn't care, neither should you. Hence, being a trend following moron, and I think the market has gone up tremendously since then. And, and, and he's got a buy and hold kind of guy, so let's go back a few years. Yeah, the market's probably up, uh, just pull a number out the air, probably 60% since then, right? And had he gotten out because of his feelings, he would be losing money. But anyway, long story, endless, I'm getting a little bit of that in the gym. And some of these people got out weeks or months ago, and now they're like, well, what do I do now? And I'm like, you know, you're making me make too many decisions. If you ask me if I'm bullish or bearish, I'm bullish. Okay, check back often. Just follow something like the TFM 10% system, like Jim 
F in the group says uh, he's he's been around since a little bit longer than me and been trading since the 70s. And he he I was flattered. He said that he has not He said that the CFM system is as good as anything out there as far as market timing. And that's very flattering coming from somebody with that much experience. So with that vote of confidence and based on the last trade, at least I know one trade doesn't make all system. But if you go back and look at the last hundred years. It's actually done quite well, and it's kept you out. No guarantees. It's free, so you, you know, I'll give you money back, but it's free. <laughs> uh, no guarantees, but it's kept you out of every bear market. But anyway, once again, let me finish my thought here. The the point is that you've you've got a lot of FOMO out there, and when you have FOMO like that, what'll happen is you people are rushing to the market, okay? like this and those people they're the last ends and in, in the first out and that's part of the premise of the trend knockout pattern is that everybody's rushing in and then you have this knockout move it knocks out the johnny come lately it sucks in the shorts the top pickers and if the market turns around and goes straight back up it spits them out and accelerates higher that's the trend knockout pattern we'll take a look at mags in one second but you can see Nasdaq got whacked in here, but hey, that's not that big of a deal. I know it's two percent; it's painful. Would it, I'm afraid to even look at the cues. I, I looked at them early. I didn't notice how much they were down. Okay, so that's eleven points. So that's eleven hundred dollars I gave up. Now, oh man, that's painful. <laughs> eleven hundred dollars. So that's eleven hundred dollars by sticking with that little TFM system. But hey, you use, use the word hold, but hopefully, I don't know. I talk about like Grover again, but hopefully, I'll be okay with that. And if not, I stop out and still get a pretty nice profit, although I give up a little bit in the process. So let me just show you Mags real quick. So Mags is a is kind of a, it's almost a textbook TKO. I'd actually like to see more pullback in there. I'd like to see another day like today, tomorrow, and that would be fantastic. And um, you know what would be great too is if Mags gaps lower. Oh, my God. This could be the mother of all. I need to make a little sticky note on that. All right. Aha bags <laughs> if it has an opening gap reversal tomorrow that could be the mother of all plays that looks pretty cool okay but you can see that it banged out new highs everybody's piling in at new highs because of the fomos kicking in and then pff, spits them out so that's what's happening there now let's get back to the question about earlier about the cues okay i will i wouldn't worry I would don't worry yet, okay? And as I tell people with market timing, as I preach, you have you have time, but not unlimited time, okay? You you could wait until that 10% number happens until that it hits that 50 simple moving average or whatever. And that takes a while. It takes people are shocked. And and I learned a lot of this from Greg Morris. A top, believe it or not. And this is almost shocking, is a process, not an event. Everybody's like, oh, what about the crash? Or the, this is the market crash. Well, market might crash, but that's why that stupid little system works, is because it's a process. And in that process, the market goes down 10% and it goes below that moving average and you stop out. Again, no guarantees. Okay. But I've done plenty of presentations where I showed that even like in 1987, it topped out for months before it actually crashed. In 2007, as I've said, a nausea. I couldn't, in October of 2007, I couldn't find a long to save my life. Mark was making brand new highs. All I could find was shorts. I apologized to my clients Then, the, because we're putting on shorts. And then in 2008, we looked pretty good, wrote our shorts down. Shorts are hard to trade, by the way. So don't, I don't wanna make it look like you just rush out and short everything. Uh, tough deal there. Now, here's one of the things I've been seeing, which is kind of fascinating. I know you're going to party with me, but it, gold, the commodity, hasn't been on fire. Now, it's beginning to take off a little in here, but gold, the commodity, like back a week or two ago, just kind of chopping around in here. But, you know, the 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 tradable universe I'm looking at from Landry 100 stocks started popping up with a lot of gold stocks and silver stocks for instance i'm trying to think of some that i added recently aem uh maybe svm i know we were just long svm not that long ago but quite a few other ones uh, kgc king's gold or whatever 
But these stocks, look at the gold stocks. They're beginning to break out with a little bit of vigor. So today was just crazy sector rotation. And somebody slapped a rusty in the ass. And, and you know, again, it's a million little things. And, and I don't know if I'd have ran out and traded something like TNA, okay? But I really hadn't paid much attention to to TNA, the the stock that is. I, I'll back myself in the corner there. <laughs> um, but it it really took off today, up eleven percent. That's the Russell, right? So the Russell finally kicked it into gear. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe uh, like REITs were on fire today. It was crazy. There was this huge sector rotation. And I don't know if that's a one-day wonder or not, but take a look at the NASDAQ uh, IBB biotech shares. They just blasted higher today. And there were just banks. Banks, look at that. I guess that's at um, whatever the report or whatever. Some report came out. Financials, at least bases. The, the XLF is not quite as impressive, but take a look at the MG financials, media general groups. That's busting out to new highs with vigor. Okay, here's your REITs. I don't know if I want to rush out and buy REITs, REITs, ugh. But look at what the REITs did today. And as I told my peeps a little while ago, I think all of these sectors that are going straight up is some pent up buying that's that's flowing into the market. And everybody was, was bitching about the breadth of the market, B-R-E-A-D-T-H. And there was only a few stocks leading the market. And those few stocks got whacked today. And that's why the indices were lower. But look at how many other areas are beginning to wake up in here. Retail down a little bit today, but as you can see, it's been doing pretty good as of late. They didn't get whacked as hard as the market. Hardware got whacked a little bit, but it's been doing pretty good. Drugs, and I think the other drugs might look a little bit better than this. The MG drugs, let's take a look at those real quick. Yeah, MG drugs, look at that, banging out all time highs. And this is why I like to look at. A while back, somebody asked me if I could cover more ETFs in the service, and I, and I gladly obliged. And it's been a good exercise, too. But I do like to to take a look at more than one sector indices, for the major sectors, at least. Some little minor sector, like brokerages or something. I'm not really worried about that. Which, by the way, IAI, I think, banged out new highs today. IAI. I think somebody's done some research in the past. I don't know if it's Connors or who. But I think if you pay attention to the brokers, the brokers do better. If the brokers are doing well, the market does okay. And that may be worth a shot. You might want to divide the brokers by the SPY, I-A-I colon SPY, S-P-Y on stock charts. And I'll do that for you next week if you don't have stock charts. And we'll see if there's a relationship there. But I'd be willing to bet there's some sort of relationship. Regional banks, I wouldn't rush out and buy them. They look like electric card gram, but bam, they were. They were winning. I keep a, a relative strength list over here that I pay attention to uh, sometimes, uh, a million little things, right? And I noticed that uh, banks today and, and lately, what's it, DPST? DPST have been really taken off. Yeah, DPST was on fire today. It was on fire yesterday, too. Not that you want to rush out and buy that, but you can see there's there's some massive money flowing into these areas. And I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully some of that money will come back in to the previously hot areas, uh, and I bet it will. Okay, we'll see, but I bet it will. If it doesn't, I'll get stopped out. But the mags, I'd be willing to bet mags will be at new highs. Oh, God, I shouldn't make a prediction like this, but I'm going to say mags will be at new highs next week. I don't know. Predict early and often, I guess. It seems like the ETF, like the Qs, don't often give clear signals. Yeah. Now take a look at like SMH. Okay, that that actually gave a clear signal recently, but I hear you. Okay, so like I trade pullback, so it's like this kind of pullback here. That wouldn't be a pullback that would interest me. That looks more like a roll over there. But as I told everyone, and I think in the market in a minute too, you had a trend pivot pullback, almost textbook in nature in the SMH. Look how beautiful that is, you know. And then maybe that's something that I should be doing as kind of a, a supplement on the side. You know, I'm long AMSC in the semis right now. And uh, like I said, it, I took pro partial profits today on that. It was it was closing in on, I couldn't stand anymore. Maybe I'm watching the screen too much, but it was close enough. And again, your real money is in the second loaf. But you could see that 
we're looking like 30 and change and it was getting fairly close to that number not super close but not not close enough to where you'd be a fool not to take it but close enough to where it's like uh, we come in tomorrow semiconductors getting killed today this thing is at a pretty good run we got in recently on it and, and again brian this goes back to the inefficiency thing this amsc let's just let's just for s and g's let's see let's take a look at this move here so that's 26 percent going back to july 1st let's take a look at the smh so let's go to july 1st uh even if we go to the high that's seven percent okay so it's three to one if you're looking at the the move that it made and i'm going to the high on smh and if it's much less probably only four or five percent to today's close but you can see that three to one that that inefficient stock and amsc is not that inefficient what how many what's the volume on that uh million and a half on average that's a fairly thick stock but it's much more inefficient than than the smh and the the just to kind of close the loop on inefficiency without getting into a long diatribe or whatever the inefficient stocks or markets everything's not priced in to them okay and then they can make these huge moves so that's the that's the difference between something that's more efficient and versus something that's more efficient would be like the spiders everybody their brothers trading that or e manis whatever uh bitcoin versus a shit coin you kind of get the idea many years ago life has sure changed that really nice model you have oh i think we were talking about rockets please show how you got the percentage move in tc well if you want to just get a percentage move you could do this you just hit your c key and that's a custom date sort but it also gives you a percent move so it's that's that and then if you want to add in a column you can see i've got a bunch of my little columns in here and you just click right here and then click on uh, a value column if you want to add tracking in t-r-a-c-k-i-n-g okay and then here's our, here's your different tracking and i probably could add a probably for this landry 100 i could add in quite a few other of these um uh things and, oh look tracking shares so that's probably what i should do too um in in the hypothetical world of this and and, and like i said before i had a hedge fund at one point in time was interested in this landry 100 and we just uh it just was such a crazy thing he was having a hard time with the volatility but this the landry 100 is very inefficient for the most part it has some efficient stocks in there but for the for the most part very inefficient and it absolutely will print money in a bull market and right now i don't have a way i track it as they come out which is a spreadsheet i know it's probably a poor way of doing it but somebody knows where i could and i need to talk to stock charts about this where i could put i think i used to use stock finder where you can make your own index and the beauty then as i've said last week as i said last week was that this list would get whacked like two or three or four percent it's a volatile thing i'm not gonna say you know don't rush out and trade this thing tomorrow unless you fully wrap your head around it but it's but it's a, a hypothetical million dollars ten thousand dollars per position just to keep the math easy but this thing would get whacked about two or three days before the market got whacked and doing what i'm doing now i'm, I'm trying again i'm trying to trade too much outside of my methodology but i am here all day and i do kind of get sucked in a little bit but it would be fascinating, and again, I know you're a part of me, but it'd be fascinating to watch this, this Landry 100 as an index, and it's like, you see it get whacked, you say, aha, the overall market is going to get whacked within two to three days, and then you could sit there and wait for it, maybe take S and G trades, and then all of a sudden, you get a day like today where you catch a route in the P's or whatever, so that's kind of cool. All right, any individual stocks you guys want to look at? I'm going a little long here. Any particular issues? And let me check in with uh, let me check in with YouTube. Sorry, I don't mean to forget about you guys over there. Okay, uh, any questions on YouTube? Okay, good day. Did I WM break out today over 211? 
what confirms a breakout, thinking of a measured move to 230, thinking about TNA. I'm thinking about TNA too. Oh, you talk about the ETF. Uh, okay. I I wouldn't rush out and buy the Rusty just yet, just because it, it, it popped up. It's got a lot of issues longer term to it. Um, if it keeps running, then maybe for an intraday trade, TNA, sure. Okay. But longer term, it still has its work cut out for it. It still has a lot of issues. I'm not a big fan of like measured moves and things like that. I think it's a it's a textbook type of thing that looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks pretty cool in a textbook is what I'm saying. Not that it's a textbook like follow it. Like it looks kind of cool in a textbook, but I think in reality, I don't I don't think it's something that's that's viable longer term. You know, the trend is your friend. Identify a solid trend. Look for something and you know, look for some acceleration, some persistency. Look at this acceleration, persistency, knockout move. I'd actually like to see a bigger move on this. Opening gap reversal. You're gonna absolutely. I hate to say this, but you'll absolutely print money possibly if you get an opening gap reversal and something like this. So if you're looking to trade like those ETFs, find something like that that's a little bit more inefficient than the others if you're going to position trade them. Opening gap reversal would be a good little intraday trade on this, which with a possible head start of establishing a position in in Max. All right, I think that's I think that's it. No stocks going once, going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you got anything unanswered, easy for me to say, daviddavelandry.com. Everybody have a great night. I'll see most of you guys and girls tomorrow and Facebook and the Facebook group. Everybody else, have a great weekend. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.